losing my mum was just, it felt as if there was no point in life anymore. I, I really didn't know what to do and I, I partly blamed myself for it, to be honest, because I didn't find out after until after my mum passed away that she was suffering ovarian, ovarian cancer while giving birth to me. And she basically had the choice of aborting me and being free of the cancer or having me and living with the cancer. And I know now, looking back, that that was her choice. My name is Tommy Kelly, I'm from Irvine and Ayrshire in Scotland and I'm age 41. I've suffered an eating disorder for 20 odd years that began with the loss of my mum in 1997. Over the next few years I was basically exercising excessively for about 15 hours a day when I was a semi-professional footballer with Scotland under 16s and I played with Greenock Morton as well. I went to visit my family in the year 2000 over in Australia and at that point I was at a really, really low weight. I don't want to go into numbers because I don't want to trigger people. But what actually happened over there was I took really, really ill and I was admitted to a hospital in Queensland, Australia. I went away to Australia basically not understanding how really ill I was at that point because I went against doctor's orders basically because I was that stuck in eating disorder and I didn't believe I actually had a problem. Now, my eating disorder was always about grief and I want to explain that to people because a lot of people may think eating disorders are about food and body image. Well, that isn't the truth at all. For me, it was always based around grief and a control mechanism. As I got back from Australia, and oh, my holiday was cut about three months short, so I got back in, I think it was March 2000. I actually arrived back in Glasgow and I suffered a massive heart attack and I went into a coma that lasted three months. I spent the next maybe nine months in hospital basically trying to get a lot better. I was fed through a tube into my stomach, got out of hospital and then really I thought the eating disorder was totally behind me. I was met my wife, went back to work and things, thought everything was past behind me and I was never going to suffer an eating disorder again. Then after we get married, about the next two years life seemed absolutely great. My wife suffered four miscarriages and I suffered another relapse and a second heart attack. It was actually lucky enough my wife was in at the house at, the, at that point in time and she heard a big noise up in the bathroom and I had fell against the sink and bashed my head. My eyes were rolling in my head and my wife phoned the ambulance and I was in the hospital again for another year, basically suffering a thing called refeeding syndrome. That's where they add calories to your body and your body goes into shock and it can cause you to have another heart attack. So it was a really, really slow process of adding in calories over the next maybe six to nine months. Uh, gradual weekly calories are 100 calories up to a normal bodily amount. I got back out of hospital and again, my dad was really, really ill. He had type one diabetes. He suffered a massive stroke, which paralyzed him all down his right side. And again, I was into a relapse because he actually passed away from that second stroke. What actually motivated me to start my YouTube channel was that I realized that there wasn't any male presence around eating disorders in general because there is a big stigma that eating disorders are the white girl privileged illness when that's far from the truth at all. Many, many sports athletes such as Paul Gascoigne, Freddie Flintoff, who I've spoken to recently on the BBC Breakfast News, they all suffered various types of eating disorders, especially bulimia, which seems really prevalent amongst men. So I realised that I wanted to give back something to people that maybe were struggling in silence because males in general don't come forward and speak about these things until they're at a really dangerous point. And I realised that myself suffering a heart attack and a coma that I was lucky to be here and be able to do that and I wanted to give back to the community. So me giving a voice to people and showing that you can actually recover from these things was really what made me come forward and actually speak about things. And it's been a big help in my recovery as well because not only am I helping other people but I'm having to stay the best I can be to be able to do that as well. The interviews in general, I think, weren't portrayed in the right light. I feel that they focused too much on things like body image and food, where that was never really the truth. I 
did speak about everything that I'd, I've spoke about, such as losing my mum, the grief and how the over-exercise kind of escalated, but how it was all a coping mechanism for what was going on. But unfortunately, the BBC and many, many others like STV that I spoke on, they focused upon the, the shock factor things to basically sell the story, which was my body image, how I was like forced on at the time and things like that. But I feel that that's just given that stigma that we all know in society about eating disorders in general. Losing my mum was just, it felt as if there was no point in life anymore. I, I really didn't know what to do and I, I partly blamed myself for it, to be honest, because I didn't find out after until after my mum passed away that she was suffering ovarian, ovarian cancer while giving birth to me. And she basically had the choice of aborting me and being free of the cancer or having me and living with the cancer. And I know now, looking back, that that was her choice and she wanted to have a family. But back then, because I was so, so ill mentally, I just blamed myself for it. And I thought, well, if I wasn't here, my mum would still be alive. That's silly because she wanted a family, but it was the way I thought back then. And I just basically <coughs> blamed myself for everything. And it was a punishment as well for everything that I'd done to myself. I would say really, to be honest, it was probably with the loss of my dad back in 2014 that I really began to realise that and that was probably because of the thought change that I had because it was almost like I had to lose everything basically to get myself back. I realised that I had lost so so many years to this eating disorder and I was losing time with my wife. I had obviously lost my footballing career. I realised that now I needed to at least, if I couldn't live the best life that I possibly could, I could at least make it the best life I possibly could by trying to help people and trying to get as better as I could. But it kind of took like, losing everybody basically to get myself back. And a lot of people talk about that with eating disorders. It's basically just like this kind of light bulb moment that happens with you. And I feel that you can get all the treatment in the world that, as in therapy or eating disorder centers, but trying to recover really happens to come from you because you've got to want the help and you've got to put in the work. And for me, that that's when the big change actually happened. I would say probably to my younger self that you're going to have bad times in life. Unfortunately, it's inevitable that you're going to lose people and you've got to try and live with that. And I feel that it's never going to go away, but at the same time, you've got to be able to move on for their memory and for yourself, which I feel that they would want. So looking back at that, I would try and kind of deal with things differently. I feel probably not punishing myself the way I did. I feel that that was just, unfortunately, mental illness is like that, and a, a lot of people kind of don't understand that, but I feel that if I'd have dealt with it differently and I'd probably spoken to somebody, I feel that that's, that would have made the difference because I bottled it all up. I didn't want to speak about it. I didn't want to tell anybody that I was suffering. So if I would have said to myself back then, speak to somebody, whether that be a family member or a friend, anything just own, open up about things because when you start sharing your battles that's half of the battle as well people just didn't understand and they basically just they basically just thought you should toughen up and go on with it which i feel is just kind of stigmatizes it in, in general as well because people think it's basically attention seeking which i can't understand because eating disorders i believe are a kind of selfish thing back and forward as well it's not that you're a selfish person but it gets to the point that the eating disorder then becomes your identity and you want to isolate yourself from everybody and it also becomes like your best friend which is pretty strange to say so for myself to then recover I had to understand that that wasn't my identity and that I wanted to be the person I was but unfortunately a lot of people do think that and it's quite a sad thing in, yeah, in society in general. Well, a lot of people kind of don't understand there is that genetic component to eating disorders because you do have a genetic component, but it's something in your life that triggers it. For myself, like I say, it was grief, but for other people it can be bullying, it can be their sexuality, it can be anything like that. There's got to be something that kind of pulls the trigger, so to speak, because it's like your genetics load the gun, your environment pulls the trigger, and that is something that's really important to understand in that. But I would say something as well, that there is an obsessive compulsive disorder. They say that that is one of the things that lead people to eating disorders. And I didn't really realise until probably about maybe five years ago that I actually did suffer 
obsessive compulsive disorder before I lost my mum and my grandfather because I remember doing things like I would change my clothes like 15 times a day, I would go for up to 10 baths a day, I had to be really, really clean and things like that and it, it got to the point that my skin was actually red raw, to the point that I had to get constant cream on and things like that and it took me a long, long while to get out of that bad cycle of that but that is something that they say that is a genetic component to an eating disorder so unfortunately for myself it was losing my mum that kind of led me to that. My, my YouTube channel is Flow Fitness and Mental Health and this, I'm under Flow underscore Fitness and Mental Health on Instagram. That's basically all about eating disorders, mental health, fitness and nutrition and it's a kind of open space and community to help people as well. And what I would say to my future self is just continuing what I'm doing, like I say, live the best life I possibly can and if I can help people along the way that's what my life purpose is because I don't want people to get to the stage that I was and if I can help at least one person I'll have done myself proud.